No, I'm filming. Over here. Down. Here you go. Here you go. I've got to start filming. No? Okay. Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome to Steph AB TV. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what it is that you need to do if you wanna travel from London or the UK all the way to the south of France. And what is it that you gotta think about with regards to things like the travel restrictions? What is it you gotta think about with regards to your total costs? And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the amount I spent on the road trip that I've just done. If you haven't seen any of those videos, then I suggest you check them out on the channel because it was a magical trip. And uh, I'll also show you the route that we took, the hotels we stayed in, and give you a bit of a break down overall. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the costs because I think that's one of the things that people often want to know relatively quickly. So I'll start with the costs. So the total breakdown of the entire road trip in this, in the Mini JCW, which was fantastic by the way, on the way down, we paid a total of 2,983 pounds for a 2,300 mile road trip spread across six days and five nights. So in terms of tolls, so just on tolls alone to get from here to Monaco, uh, I spent £191 on tolls, which isn't cheap. Uh, food, we spent a total of £553. Fuel, we did seven tanks of fuel in the Mini JCW, uh, totaling £297, which really isn't too bad. I think you could do it with far less tanks, but I think I did nearly a tank on its own just driving the route Napoleon. So you just got to be mindful and bear in mind, I was filming video content as well. So I was doing a lot of extra miles where you might not necessarily do that in your own road trip. Uh, in terms of the hotels, we stayed in four hotels and I'll show you the hotels shortly. But the total price for hotels was £1,145. Uh, then the Euro tunnel cost £197 uh, and that was just a single uh, return. There was no Flexi Plus included. It was a really kind of just a base ticket uh, to go back and forth to uh, Calais and back. Uh, then we had to pay tests. Now, when I break down the travel restriction stuff, it's gonna probably change by the time you lot see this and I'll explain more shortly, but we paid 200 pounds in COVID tests. Uh, and then on top of that, we then spent a further 500 pounds on dog care for him uh, and a few other bits and bobs as well. So that's kind of where we reached the total of, we'll call it 3000 pounds minus some change. So uh, yeah, a lot of money, but an incredibly memorable trip. Now, when it comes to traveling to the south of France, um, there's a couple of things that you need to bear in mind with regards to things like travel restrictions. Now, everything that I'm gonna be mentioning is specifically for people who are double vaccinated. If you're not double vaccinated, the process may be slightly different. So please do check on the government website before you do anything and say, oh, but Steph said I can go to the south of France without any tests. Um, so what we did was uh, in order to get from the UK into Monaco, uh, we didn't have to do any pre-departure tests. So you don't have to do any of those to go out of the UK uh, but what you do need to do is to download uh, the NHS app and on there you can get access to your digital uh, QR code for your double vaccination um, and you need that because it's really important because everywhere in France anywhere you go to eat etc and anywhere you go to stay they'll ask you for your QR code so both of you need to have it and they will scan you both so if you don't have it then you probably won't be allowed into the premises um, the other thing as well the Euro tunnel whilst I didn't really care about my pre-departure test they did care about my COVID vaccination status. So what I had to do was upload a photo or a screenshot of my NHS app uh, into the Eurotunnel app, uh, and then from there, Eurotunnel approve it. And then when I got to the border, it was all good to go. However, the border itself was interesting. We arrived really early. Uh, however, we uh, ended up missing the first train because the queue to get from the UK side to the French side uh, took about an hour, uh, which is something I'm not really used to happening. I mean, yes, in the past when we had things like the lorry strikes, it was quite long, uh, but I wasn't expecting it to be that long. So allow plenty of time to travel out of the UK. Once you get into France, um, it's pretty much the same as everything. Uh, you have to wear masks inside the, property, uh, the premises. So when you're, travel, uh, when you're going into uh, shops, restaurants, etc., you do need to wear a mask. So make sure you bring a mask with you. Uh, and if you go to Monaco at the moment, at the time of filming this video, Monaco, you also have to wear masks outside as well. So Monaco is still a bit more strict. Uh, you don't need anything additional if you're traveling from the UK other than proof of vaccination status. Um, and what else? I'm just trying to think, have I missed anything? I think that's pretty much it for the way out. 
Now, when you're coming back, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, what I suggest you do is, well, again, at the time of filming this, you need a pre-departure test to return to the UK and a day two PCR test. Both of these can be bought from a website called Cured, which is what we used, uh, and it costs around about 100 quid each. So it is a bit pricey. Uh, the PCR, uh, sorry, the pre-departure test is done two days prior to your departure from France back to the UK. So you schedule like a Zoom call with somebody uh, and you do the test in front of them and you upload your certificate. Uh, so you upload your results and then within about 15 minutes, they'll give you the proof of a negative COVID test within 72 hours. With that negative test, you then upload that to the Eurotunnel app along with your vaccination status. And then those two will go green on the app and then you'll be allowed to travel back into the UK. And then of course, when you come back to the UK, you also need to fill out a passenger locator form. Um, oh, I must mention, uh, there is a French form as well. It's like a really basic A form, which you just kind of sign, which you have when you go out to France. The big one is the passenger locator form for the UK to bring that back. Um, so you do need to have a confirmation of your PCR, your PCR test for booking, uh, and that needs to go in your PLF. You also need to have your pre-departure test for the PLF. Uh, Again, by the time this video goes out, I'm pretty certain the UK would have scrapped the pre-departure test for anything other than red countries. So you should be okay, but you will probably still need a day two PCR. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the route and uh, I've got it here on my phone. So I will look down quite a lot because I did a bit of kind of pre-screenshot slash recording to show you guys exactly the route we took in the mini JCW. So we did London to Monaco, but we stopped a number of places along the way. So day one, uh, we did London all the way to our hotel, which was called Hotel Mercury in Lyon. So we, we wanted to get past the main hustle and bustle of Lyon. So we kind of stayed just kind of at the south of Lyon. The journey itself was 10 hours and 13 minutes, but when you factor in stops, it becomes really closer to 12, 13 hours. So bear that in mind. If you don't want to pay tolls, there is a route through Belgium and Luxembourg, but you're adding significant time to your journey. And that first stint was 621 miles. Um, but in that first stint, I wanted to visit Reims. Uh, Reims, a beautiful old kind of historic F1 circuit. I'd never been, so I wanted to kind of visit that. Um, and from home to Reims was actually five hours and 45 minutes. And then obviously you factor in the Eurotunnel crossing time. But um, yeah, that was that was really cool. Uh, and then from Reim, it's where we went to our first hotel. It was called Mercury Leon S. Chaponnet. Uh, like I said, down to the south of Leon, really nice, really reasonable in terms of pricing. I think we paid around about 70 quid for the night. And as you can see, it's, you know, it's nothing fancy. You didn't see this in the videos, plainly because I was just so exhausted and I didn't really want to film anything at the time. Uh, but the food is decent. Right next door to the hotel, you've got like a really nice kind of uh, steakhouse. Uh, so we went to that uh, and as you can see where it's located it's kind of just kind of south of Lyon so once you get past you know the N346 and you get down towards Venice uh, that's where we stayed so that meant we could check out nice and early in the morning and uh, we were good to go then the following day we did a pretty well it was a reasonably good stint we did from the Hotel Mercury in Lyon down to our hotel which was La Masse Candille beautiful hotel where we were going to stay there two nights Now you have two options to do this we did the quick and easy route and we did pay tolls for four hours and 20 minutes worth of driving but i would definitely recommend taking the non-toll route uh, because it's much more picturesque you capture part of the route napoleon and uh, next year when we do this again i will be taking that route i will be staying near grenoble the hotel itself la mas candille is one of the most beautiful hotels i've stayed at honestly the location is stunning it's just outside of Cannes. Uh, and as you can kind of see, uh, you've got a beautiful swimming pool area. You've got a number of swimming pools, actually, a couple of spas. The food there is incredible. It's got a one-star Michelin restaurant, which is uh, well worth going. If you go there, you can eat in a little town called Moujon, which you would have seen in the first video on this, which is a beautiful, picturesque, sleepy town. But also, if you can, uh, eat in the hotel. It's very pricey. Uh, I think the taster menu was £100 per person but it was it was phenomenal the food was absolutely incredible and i very very much enjoyed my stay we uh, stay there we spent two nights and it was superb absolutely superb and you can see where it's located like Mujon is right next door you can walk to that sleepy town um, and it's really not far from Cannes it's about 20 minute drive to Cannes so yeah if you fancy going down to Cannes for a bit of hustle and bustle uh, you can do that from that hotel 
Now, um, we stayed two nights there, and when you would have seen the video that I did on this, which was the kind of mountain pass drive, where I got up really early, I left the hotel at just before sunrise, climbed up through the mountains, uh, I basically drove here to San Valle de la Terni, Tei, Thay? San Valle de la Thay? Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, and uh, you can see that all of those twisty routes, that's kind of the route Napoleon as well. So you've got incredible roads through the mountains, well worth going. And it's only half an hour away from the hotel. So um, yeah, if you want to get up nice and early, half an hour run, you get to the kind of start of the route Napoleon, you go through the mountains and you just enjoy it. And when you've got a car like this, it's just worth every moment. So definitely worth doing. Then after that, uh, we left and we went to, uh, from our hotel in La Mascandil Can, we drove all the way to uh, Jean, uh, Saint Jean Cap Ferrat, uh, and that is just before Monaco, beautiful little town, beautiful little bay, uh, little port. Uh, that's where we kind of had a load of nice ice cream and just indulged in beautiful views and scenery. Um, and that wasn't far. I recommend doing the non-toll route. We did the non-toll route, so the coastal route. Um, it's slightly longer. Uh, but you kind of get to go, to go and see kind of Nice, etc., which is definitely worthwhile, especially when you're down by the French Riviera, definitely worth exploring all the scenery possible. Uh, from there, it was only an hour, so it didn't take long. And then from, uh, where are we? Yeah, from Jeanne Cap Ferrat, we then did a route to Monaco. Our hotel was the Hotel Columbus in Monte Carlo. Uh, really, really nice hotel, uh, relatively pricey for one night. It was about 370 euros, and I had to pay 40 pounds for parking for the night. So it isn't the cheapest, but then nothing in Monaco is. It's kind of located on one of the other bays. So if you look at Monaco Main Bay, then you've got the palace up on the hill, and over the other side of the palace you've got the secondary bay which is where we stayed and that's where our hotel was uh, really nice um, where i took that magical kind of viewpoint of the whole of monaco from above uh, that's called the dog's head and you have you follow a route called uh, la tourbi uh, a really really cool route as well great driving road and uh, yeah it's a bit of a hike you can drive like 90 percent of the way then you've got to park up and walk the rest uh, so i'd recommend bringing some water because it gets really hot up there and if you're scared of heights don't go, don't go, trust me. Um, the Hotel Columbus itself um, was really good. I paid extra for the sea view and it was worth every penny. Um, as you could see the kind of sun rising, it was just such a magical view. You all right, buddy? What are you doing? Okay, you, you, you crack on. It was such a magical view and the room was actually reasonably good size. I'm surprised at the room size, but um, again, anything you do in Monaco is extremely expensive. Uh, then on the way back, we powered through, we did a massive leg. Uh, we did Monaco all the way up towards Reims, just off, just off Reims. Um, it's called La Dewey Glace, uh, two crosses or something, which is basically the home of uh, Charles de Gaulle, uh, when, where he kind of was born. Really, really nice, really beautiful location. Uh, again, you've got a number of routes here to take. So you can take a route which goes into Italy and then comes back across. So you do a lot of kind of the Alps and, and some of the, I'm not sure if it does some of the Pyrenees, but that's, a, that's gonna be a magical route to drive. But because um, of COVID, we didn't wanna take that risk of having to disclose another country we went to. So we didn't do that. Uh, what I should have done was the no tolls route up through the route Napoleon to Grenoble, but I didn't. We did the kind of long winded eight hour stint via tolls. So you definitely have options. And for the sake of an extra few hours, I'd probably say it'd be worth it if you've got good, good weather and a, and a good car to drive. Uh, plus you save on toll money as well. Uh, and we stayed in that, the little really, really lovely sleepy town and of um, Maison Tartine, uh, uh, sorry, and uh, the hotel was lovely. Really, really nice, really quiet village. Uh, really, really chill, really scenic as well. Traditional France, not much going on, very, very sleepy. And uh, yeah, as you can see, the, the photos of the hotel were, were beautiful, it was stunning. And then just about a five minute walk was one of the nicest restaurants that we ate in the entire trip. So reasonably priced as well. Uh, and then following on from there, the following day, route home, uh, it was a seven hour stint from uh, just outside of Reims all the way home. So uh, yeah, I think we found some good stops. Uh, I think we only really ever did two major stints where it was quite exhausting, which was day one and the day from Monaco up to Maison Tartine. Uh, but other than that, it was an amazing trip. 
So well, I know a number of you guys asked me um, what the route was, so I'm hoping that kind of helps you. I'm also hoping that this helps anybody watch, wanting to travel um, through France by car, particularly with all of the confusing information that's flying around. And as remember, remember when you're watching this, this is dated like September 2021. So if you're watching this in a few months, that travel advice may have changed. So always check the government website. Uh, and yeah, total cost of the trip, three grand, worth every penny every penny i'm broke now but it was worth it but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video of the mini jcw road trip costs and traveling through france uh, with travel restrictions if you did please please subscribe comments are always welcome and i'll see you all very soon on the next video take care guys Bye.